Hey, Adam, Jeez, why, why do you think they called bumper scary? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> they come at the beginning, at the end, like bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alex, you're a marketing guy. Do you like that design behind Paul? Does that, that sweet logo thing look pretty cool <laughs> to you? <laughs> hey, I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's, that's really professional, isn't it? <laughs> it? Well, this is a professional podcast. <laughs> I met her in a parking lot and was handed two little Yorkies. And the only person I knew that knew Yorkies was Paul. So I called Paul. <laughs> <and> said, Paul. <laughs> Sweet Talk is a weekly 20-minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. Find us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and subscribe today. Now, it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sweet Talk, our weekly podcast here at Idaho State University's Continuing Education and Workforce Training. I am your co-host, Paul Dickey, the Video Instruction Manager and Apprenticeship Coordinator here at Sweet and as always, joining me is Gary Salazar, our director. Gary, how are you doing today? I'm good, Paul. I, I love the sound effects. We got to come up with that thing, though. Sweet. You know, that is Sweet. really so nice. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. I'm, I'm going I'm to do that for you, Gary. I'm going <laughs> to make this sound good. Sweet. Yeah. Next thing <laughs> you know, it'll be a bell tone, you know, cell phones everywhere. <laughs> hey, thanks for the welcome. And we're going to have a great podcast today. It's uh, nearing the weekend for the 4th of July. And also joining us today is our uh, special marketing coordinator, Angela, Angela Wilhelm, who is uh, actually very, very cool and nice to have on board. And she got us a great guest today. Angela, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, and I am now going to officially request that special be put in front of my title <laughs> since you just called me the special marketing coordinator. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. Is, is, that, is, that, is that, I'm sorry, is that special or is that special? No, no, special. it's like, both, it's are, both, both types of special are special. Yeah. But the yeah, special we, marketing yeah. coordinator makes me feel uh Special. Feel, yeah, it makes me feel <laughs> like my job is very secure. Yeah, uh, we are all special around here. Hey, it, welcome. Thank you have, uh, for joining us, Angela. Uh, and, and Paul, thank you again for getting us started up. As I mentioned, this is a, a podcast prior to uh, our uh, 4th of July uh, coming up next week. And so you will probably see this on the other side of the 4th of July. And you'll wonder, well, these guys really are having too much fun on uh, preparing for a weekend. And we really are. <laughs> We have a special guest today. Her name is Kindy, Kindy Wilson. She is the, I want to get this right. She's, uh, depending on how you want to say it, the head coach of ISU's rodeo team or the rodeo team's head coach. And she's also uh, an, a certified athletic coach here at Idaho State University. Kindy, this is so super that you would take the time out to join us. Thank you for being here. How are you doing? I am doing great. Glad to be a part of this. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> I am. Every, you everybody must have seen says my the last same thing. name and panicked how to say it a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, if, if I get that wrong, then uh, then I'm special. I appreciate <laughs> your being with us. I, I am just having so much fun with these things. And uh, it is nice to hear from somebody who's doing something really cool at the university. Not that we aren't all there, but I love hearing about the radio team and, and things like that because I don't know anything about it. And it just sounds cool. Could you tell us a little bit, Kendi, about your background and then maybe a little bit about what you do as the head coach? Mm -hmm. uh, so I was lucky enough to be raised on a ranch and farm growing up. Um, my dad rodeoed, my mom showed cattle. And so anything to do with a horse and a cow was pretty much in my DNA. And then I continued to junior high, high school rodeo, and then I college rodeoed in New Mexico. And then I actually came to Idaho State for grad school and competed for a year. And I finished graduate school and kind of ended up sticking around Pocatello and the opportunity presented itself to help because I'd been helping a bunch of the college kids at the time and they were changing over coaching positions and decided to kind of give it a whirl. And oh my. I did not realize at the time how many pieces and parts go into coaching. I don't think anybody even at the university level, totally understands how many moving parts there is to be a coach at a rodeo team, especially being the only coach of the rodeo team. 
because <laughs> most of the colleges and universities might even have four coaches because there's so many different parts to things. So it's a lot, but it's nonstop. It goes year round. Even when the kids are at home for summer, there's like, mm-hmm. I'm working on our rodeo approvals all summer long, getting all of our stock bids, getting hay, getting cattle. So it's kind of nonstop for the most part. Oh my gosh. There's so much in what you just said that, that I don't, I can't fathom all the <laughs> logistics you have to go through. Yeah. Like, wh- where, where do the yeah. rodeo uh, competitors come from? Where do you get the horses? Where do they get stabled? Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to take care of a lot of that, don't you? Yep. There is a lot of that. Like for us, it's not just showing up and going to practice. You're not putting on your shoes or things like that, or having batting practice, different stuff. Instead, like there is morning, noon and night care of their animals. Um, practice involves a lot of prep, like ground prep for our arena, our practice facility, getting our cattle ready, making sure afterwards that everything is fed, healthy, doctored. This year, we've had kind of a crazy winter, which was really hard on cattle and livestock. Mm -hmm. So we spent a lot, a lot of time and a lot of snow this year, doctoring, feeding, strawing, just keeping everything healthy and content for the most part. Oh, wow. So how many people are on the rodeo team and for, for what events? Could you explain that a little bit? Mm-hmm. So we have men and women on the rodeo team. This last year, I had about 28 kids. Um, wow. Majority of my kids all compete in multiple events, that being anything from tie down roping, breakaway roping, team roping, uh, steer wrestling, goat tying, barrel racing, breakaway roping pretty much most of the events, all of my males and female athletes are are multi-competitor. So they're not only just focusing on one event, they're focusing on two to three events every time. So that means different horses, different ropes, all sorts of stuff. Wow. That that's an awful lot just there. So when you Mm -hmm. say you are taking care of animals and, Mm -hmm. and during the summertime and prepping, do, do I understand that you have a lot of like meetings, you have, you have classes to rope, or literally rope in sessions where mm-hmm. you talk about strategies and things and how to, how to do the performance plus whatever coaching you're giving them. Is that what also goes into this thing? I mean, you got to set up a bunch of rodeo mm-hmm. meets, don't you? Yep. So we host a home rodeo, the Bengal roundup in September of each year. And so it's a hosted intercollegiate rodeo and It goes in, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, Sponsorships, budgets, putting stock bids out for rough stock, timed event cattle, um, getting our announcers, getting our facility, making sure that the public knows about our event. So social media, things like that as well, radio stations, um, feed. So for the most part, it's kind of a work in progress every single day until that time hits. And then that week is about the craziest week of my life. I'm not going to <laughs> lie to you. I am I can keep it together pretty good, but that week stresses me out a little bit. So wow, I'm lucky enough coach. to have kids. Yeah, yeah you're doing that all by yourself. Yep. There's a lot of paperwork. I mean, we have to go through all the good legal processes of everything. I am really, really blessed to have great people that I work with at Idaho State that help kind of help me through the process because I didn't really have any knowledge of where to go, who to go to, who I need to talk to. So I've had some people kind of take me under the wings, give me that process. Some of them are probably so tired of me calling them on a weekly basis. They don't know what to do with themselves, but Mm -hmm. I would rather know exactly how to do something and do it right than not. So there's that. Oh yeah. Kendi, Kendi, that's a big, that's a big, big, big chore. Hey, Angela, I'm sorry. You go ahead. No, I just have a quick question. So for people who are outside of the uh, equestrian industry, uh, Mm -hmm. where do your athletes, obviously your athletes aren't just human. Some of your athletes are Mm -hmm. animals. So where do those animals stay uh, during their time at Idaho State University? A majority of my kids they keep their horses up at the Bannock County Event Center that is our home practice facility so we are lucky enough to have really nice stalling facilities we have an indoor arena numerous outdoor arenas and so we really do have one of the top facilities for even the northwest so we've been really lucky in that aspect so Kendi 
kind of break this down for me. So someone comes to Idaho University and they want to join the um, rodeo team. Do the, mm-hmm. Is it tryouts and then a certain number are accepted and then they bring their own horses with them? And is that how that works? It's very similar to any other sport. So trying to get into college, playing football, basketball, volleyball. So uh, most of my kids that I have on the team this year, I have been watching them for years, getting ready to recruit them. I went about the recruitment process. Um, I do have walk-ons that decide to come to Idaho State that kind of contact me about July. So they reach out. Um, Big thing is they have to have their own vehicles, trucks, trailers, their horses. They have to supply their own supplies that way, their own feed. And so it kind of comes down to an expense. Like it's a very, very expensive sport versus any other, in my opinion. So it's a lot for a college kid. So those kids that are here and want to rodeo, it is something that they have worked for from the time they were little and have continuously planned on and prepared for when they get here. Um, For the most part, I do a simple application process for kids that I have not personally like reached out to talked to recruited had for campus tours sat down with their parents them um just for safety purposes like so there's opportunities for kids at ISU to get involved with the rodeo team and they may not rodeo so they also like my kids have to be part of the National Intercollegiate Rodeo Association and obtain their membership just like any athlete would do through like the NCAA um very specific like requirements there So for the kids that want to be a part, they can come be a practice, be around the team, work with the fundraising opportunities, things like that, get to be a part of it, but they may not have horses and may not get to actually compete and travel like the rest of them. Hmm, hmm. What you're taking this on and you're coming into um, a field that is probably very, very specialized in terms of what it does. And Idaho State University, I, I've heard, has had some really good success with their rodeo teams. How, where where do you go in the level? Like if it was a football team, they'd go through different stages throughout the year, play a number of teams, and then they'd mm-hmm. hopefully get to the playoffs and hopefully get to the national championship. Is there something similar to that with rodeo at the intercollegiate level? There is. There's a lot of moving parts in college rodeo. So when it comes down to winning like team championships, rodeo has always been a very individualized sport. But when it comes to team championships, I am allowed to put four women on my points team and six men on my points team each weekend throughout the 10 rodeos that we have. And it's their individual success within those different events that they compete in that helps collaborate and bring points for us to win like regional level. And then the same when we go on to the college national finals, how those kids individually represent in their event helps represent the team. Mm-hmm. Um, we have been very, very lucky. I don't know if ISU Rodeo gets the, I guess not necessarily the support, but they have achieved so much for so long. Like our very first national champion goes back to 1952, which I don't think anybody even realizes. Wow. And I mean, we've had great success for many years. And then I was lucky when I started coaching, I was very, very goal oriented. And honestly, if anybody knows me, I really like to win. (laughs) So, (laughs) so I was about winning because I wanted to give these kids a stage that everybody in the community had to be like, whoa, like, look what these kids are doing because it had kind of fallen short of like not getting the promotion that they deserved and getting the backing like from the community. So I started by, my whole goal was to build my women's team. So I built my women's team the first year. They have now won three regional championships in a row, many, many titles. Um, And then I started building my men's team that second year and my men are headed right there now. And so that's my goal now is to see the men's team step up just like my women's team has. And it's promoted it. It's made my job a little bit easier because we're on, people notice us now and notice like ISU is here and they will win. And so we have a Mm. ton of kids reach out, email, phone calls all year long, starting from when they're about sophomores in high school, follow up all the way to their senior year. 
because just like other sports, as of March 1st, their senior year, they can actually sign full letters of intent also to go to their school. Oh, cool. So, are, are there scholarships associated with this? Yes. Yep. There is scholarships. Our scholarship funding, that has been honestly my biggest goal overall is to improve our scholarship funding. So we do a ton of fundraising. Each kid has to get at least $1,000 in sponsorships to help fund scholarships and fund our travel because our travel expenses are crazy. Um, hosting our rodeo costs us about fifteen to 17000 just for our home event for two days. Um, things like that. So by us getting out there and getting our name out there, people are starting to really step up and help us. And that goes towards scholarships, which has helped because before we were able to give kind of minor scholarships and now we're able to give closer and closer to full ride scholarships, which is my goal. That's super. What, what a great offering to a lot of students. And it, it's a <laughs> lifelong passion is what it seems like. And Yep. And, and when, when their students come through, I mean, they're studying too, they're, they're in school mm -hmm. and having to take care of that, plus taking care of their animals, plus working with the radio team to, you know, to, to get it set up for the next, uh, next meet. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Very, very busy time. What is it? What's the season for rodeo? Um, our busiest time for college rodeo is pretty much the day they come back to school in the fall, August till about the end of October. Um, then we have a little bit of a downtime for November, December, and then January, when they come back, we start practice and prep because our first college rodeo will be the first weekend of March. And then we go until almost the week before finals. And then after mm -hmm. that, it's prep time. And then we go to the college finals in the middle of June for 10 days. And so it's kind of nonstop. And then every one of those kids rodeos all summer, like everybody's getting ready for the 4th of July, but we consider it cowboy Christmas for us. You can hit about three or four different rodeos a day for about six days. So everybody's on the road traveling and it's just kind of fun to see them continue and go from there. Wow. That sounds so like a blast. A lot of your athletes that uh, do this, they also do it on their own during the summertime. Is that what you're saying? Yep. So we have a lot of kids on the team that rodeo professionally that are going to PRCA rodeos, WPRA events, and are ranked on the national level in their events. So mm -hmm. what, what, what a cool time. What kind of feedback are you getting from, uh, from your, your team? I mean, uh, are things, do they come back to you and say, Hey, I really like this meet. This is one we, we really want to do well at. They say, Hey, we should take a pass on this. Or is the coach deciding all of that? Are you, are you talking those things? You know, people say, Hey, I, I've had enough of this or, Hey, I want more. What kind of mm -hmm. feedback do you get? Um, the feedback I get for the most part is they always want more like mm -hmm. rodeo kids are kind of nonstop go, go, go. Like, can we have more practices? Can we can, if we don't have a rodeo on Saturday and Sunday, can we practice Saturday and Sunday? Um, it's usually more like they want more time. I wish I was able to give them more practice time as well. Um, we're just not set up right now in the facility to be able to do that. And so that's something I would like to see us getting more practice times versus like we have mandatory practices two times a week. And then majority of the other days, they're either at my house practicing with me and my husband. They go to other facilities like every single day they're wanting to do something, which I think is really cool and says a lot because majority of these kids like I have doc doctor pharmacy students. I have one going into veterinary school like everybody is very, very school and academic focused. And when you think of how much time academics takes along with some of them also have jobs on the side, care, like it just says a lot that they are willing to always want to do more. And so I always want to try to give more and do more for them because of that. Right. Oh, yeah. What, what, what a cool, a cool coming together, that camaraderie that, that your team develops and all. Uh, you're really working with them in many, many ways. I mean, maybe subtly there's leadership training going on with, with how you're helping them you know, take over different things or show different things, learning lessons and all that. That's fantastic. Paul, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I imagine you said that a lot of um, your, your team, they come with already these rodeo skills and they have been doing it. So that must mean that you have a lot of parental support as well. Yeah. So a lot of these kids kind of came from similar backgrounds. I have kids that didn't rodeo until they were in high school and then just got with the right people. 
a lot of the things with rodeo is who you spend your time with and spending time with those that are better than you in that event and that sport betters you. And so they're all really good about that. And we have great role models around here. I mean, we have numerous national finals rodeo qualifiers here in the Pocatello area that no one even really knows. And so those guys are always great to step up, come help the kids. Like during the summer season, like when we start school, there's a lot of big pro rodeos here locally and kind of around the area. So the guys like to come through and the women and want to help out with the kids. And then they have great, great parents behind them. That's backing them. That's helping them. I mean, I don't know many parents that would want to send a $70,000 truck and trailer and horses and everything with kids if they didn't fully have their heart and commitment into it. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. The the support you're talking about is is just all over the place. It's not just, uh, not mm-hmm. just the participants themselves and what they commit to this, but also the families behind them, a lot of community kickback and support in this thing. Mm-hmm. And this is all around uh, a program at Idaho State University. So what, what a cool uh, external uh, support you're getting and also support from the university to be able to do all these things and, you know, house animals in different places around here. Mm-hmm. What, what a really neat thing. Uh, thank you, Kindy, for uh, what you're doing here and being able to do that. Paul and, and Angela, we're getting close. I just, I don't want to not give um, Kindy the opportunity to say if, if there's a student out there or somebody who's interested in coming to Idaho State University, you know, and, and hey, did we have a rodeo team here, you know, uh, maybe, maybe Kindy, would you uh, be willing to share your contact information if they wanted to reach out to you and ask questions or say, hey, this is how, this is what we do. I have a webpage or I have a phone number. Would you be willing to do that for the audience? Yes, I would. The easiest way to contact me is by email because I get flooded with a lot of interest. Um, My email address is k-i-n-d-e-e-w-i-l-s-o-n at Mm isu.edu. Feel free to reach out. I love when kids send videos, get a lot of video, want to know more info, and then we can just touch base that way and then we'll set up a phone call. Awesome. Good way to go into. And also before... uh, before we do leave, you know, it, it, are there any special moments that you can recall that you'd like to share uh, with the audience, something that uh, touched you or something that you saw that was really, really kind of kind of neat that maybe the audience doesn't know, or if they'd like to hear about it, would you care to share? Yeah, I always will. Um, I think one of the neatest things for me is, so this year was the first year that I lost my graduating kids that had been my like first year here and getting to see how close some of those guys are and just the support that they have for each other and the support that they have for me. I mean, they'll leave me little notes. Um, I always have a clipboard at the rodeos because I have nonstop notes. They'll leave me little post-it notes. And like when they know I'm like down or tired or frustrated, I get little kind of pick-me-ups and I don't expect that as a coach. So it's kind of one of those things that's kind of like near and dear to me and help to kind of make me the coach I am and the coach I want to be. Yeah, very, very neat. Hey, I, one last thing here I, before we go, I got to hold you on this. When you were going through the different kinds of events that mm-hmm. uh, your students have, your team has, was, was bull riding in that? Yep, bull riding's in there also. Oh my gosh, that's yep. got to be the scariest <laughs> kind of sport for me out there. Oh, uh, and, and people yeah. love to jump on this this bowl and ride it around. Arena is how do you get to be so brave to go do that? They that makes my heart stop by every time. So my bull riders are kind of funny. Um, when we would have practice, it was literally me and a couple other girls that were the pickup men. So we would have to rope the bulls, make sure everybody was safe. And it became more hilarious for everybody watching than us because like the bull riding starts, like I love my timed event kids. They do not make my heart stop like the bull riding does. I have heart palpitations every time because my kids like to keep me on my toes and take a few head diggers getting off. So then I worry about them. And so I've jumped the fence a few times. They know that, but (laughs) Yeah, it's very, it's intense. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Practice is intense. So, right. yeah. Well, well, thank you for sharing all that. Uh, you're not hearing the timer, I think, but it has been going off. Uh, 
this this has been very very interesting for me you helped us explore an area at idaho state university that i don't think gets near enough publicity um, but you're doing a fantastic job kendy so cool to hear you talk about all the elements that go into coaching and and helping a team excel obviously you've been doing very very good with the women's team and the men's team coming yeah. along and i'm looking forward to even maybe coming out and watching now a little bit more closely in September. You said September is when yep, the, September, we have our event. I want to say September 14th and 15th. So mm -hmm. I'll post wow. more info, but I hope we can get as many people community wise to come out and support them. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what a cool, cool thing. And, and our, our community is, is a huge, huge giving back community. I know they'd love to mm -hmm. hear this and we'll help you out. Angela and Paul, we're, we're at the end of our podcast today, and we're going to start wrapping this up. But we've had, I think, a very interesting conversation with Kendi Wilson, who's the uh, head coach of the Idaho State University rodeo team. Also, she didn't mention her other job as a certified athletic coach. So she's one busy woman, you know, helping take care of a bunch of young people who are out there chasing their passion, as well as helping uh, the university's uh, uh, portrait of, hey, we do a lot of things here, including... Um, rodeo and it's so cool thank you for joining us kendy thanks for being a guest paul angela uh time to time to as paul puts it put the bumpers on and wrap this up wrap this up okay thank you so much for being on today kendy i really appreciate it um gary as always can't do this without you man <laughs> uh, angela thank you so much for uh, always putting this podcast together really appreciate it now if anyone would like to check out our offerings that we here ha have here at continuing education workforce training you can visit our website at cetrain.isu.edu you can give us an email at cetrain at isu.edu or give us a call at 208 282-3372. And if you enjoy this podcast, please like, subscribe, share. It really does help us reach a broader audience and let people know what's going on in our area and all the wonderful people that we have in our community. Hey, well said. Hey, everybody, don't forget 4th of July weekend. You be safe out there.